Electrochemistry concerns the interconversion of chemical and electrical energy. Primarily, electrochemistry takes advantage of the fact that there are certain types of reactions where one species transfers electrons to another species. And in these reactions, it's literally an electron, one or more, that's moving from one atom or molecule to another. This movement of an electron can be channeled into, into electrical energy in the form of a voltage or a current flow. And conversely, we can apply a voltage to drive electron flow, say, in the opposite direction of the spontaneous direction. So electrochemistry is concerned both with the conversion of the chemical, for example, free energy of a reaction into a voltage and a current, as well as the conversion of an applied voltage to chemical energy. Now, in the context of these reactions in which electron transfer occurs, keeping track of electrons is critical. We want to keep track of how many electrons a species has before it reacts and after it reacts to determine whether it gained or lost electrons. And in these electron transfer processes that we're concerned with, there are two types of what we call half reactions that can occur. The first is called oxidation. Oxidation is the loss of electrons from a species. The second is called reduction, and reduction is the gain of electrons. So you may have heard a mnemonic to remember this, which is loss of electrons is oxidation. Leo says gain of electrons is reduction. Ger. So Leo the lion says Ger can help you keep in mind that losing electrons is oxidation, gaining electrons is reduction, and every once in a while, even I have to use this, this mnemonic from time to time. It's highly useful to remember these definitions. In the sort of simple schematic we looked at before where A was transferring, let's say, one electron to B, we can see that A is losing an electron. That's oxidation. That is, A is undergoing oxidation or being oxidized, while B is gaining an electron it is being reduced or undergoing reduction. And every redox process contains both of these things happening. That is, oxidation and reduction always occur together. Electrons can't just be lost from a species and head out to oblivion, or come in from oblivion and be gained by a species. They always have to come from somewhere and go to somewhere. That's why oxidation and reduction always occur together. Electrons lost from one species must be gained by another. That said, we can still think about the loss and gain of electrons without a specifically dedicated recipient in what are called half reactions. So for example, we can think about a neutral atom A losing an electron to form A plus, since electrons are negatively charged, and the free quote unquote electron, where a recipient is implied here, but we don't want to specify exactly what that recipient is, as it may vary from context to context. Point for the moment is that this is an oxidation process, because the species A is losing an electron. If we think about the reverse direction, in which A plus combines with an electron to form A, that's a reduction. And more specifically, that's a reduction of A plus, while the process in black, the forward direction, is an oxidation of the neutral species A. This type of process can also occur with multiple electrons. So, for example, a neutral species A can undergo oxidation to release two electrons to form A2 plus and two electrons. This is still an oxidation of A. The reverse direction here is a reduction of A2 plus. In general, if you see electrons as a reactant in a half reaction, that corresponds to a reduction since the electrons are being incorporated into the other reactant. If you see electrons as a product, that indicates an oxidation half reaction as the reactant is giving up the electrons as the process goes forward. Reactions that involve the transfer of one or more electrons from one species to another are known as redox reactions. Redox is just a condensed version of oxidation and reduction.
To help us balance redox reactions and understand the number of electrons transferred in the course of a redox reaction event, we need to think about what are called oxidation numbers, which are sort of like formal charge, not exactly the same, but help us keep track of how many electrons a species has and how many it's gained or lost in the course of a redox process. In the next video, we'll talk about determining oxidation numbers in detail.